Hello everyone, welcome to Blue Cube channel. By using camera layers in After Effects, we can view 3D layers from any angle and distance. Just like in the real world, we move the camera or place it in and around a scene to capture different views. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I recommend that you subscribe so that you can see the next tutorials. One thing you should not forget is that in After Effects, the cameras only affect the 3D layers, so I will convert these two layers to 3D layers. To create a camera in this empty space, right-click, click New and then Camera to open the Camera Settings window. Or you can press the Ctrl, Alt, Shift, and C keys at the same time to open the Camera Settings window. And the third way is to select New and then Camera from the Layer menu. In this window, we customize the camera settings. First, we can choose a name for the camera, which is named Camera 1 by default. On the left side, we determine whether we want to use the camera of one node or two nodes. In order to better explain the difference between the two types of cameras, I will first create a two-node camera and then compare it with a one-node camera. In the preset menu, you can select the type of camera you want to use. Note that the presets are named according to the focal distance and when the preset changes, the focal distance value also changes. By default, the focal length is 50 mm, which simulates the viewing angle of the human eye. I select the focal length of 50 mm and press the OK button to create a dual node camera. In this way, camera layer 1 is created. Also, the name of the active camera is written in the corner of the composition panel. But to see the camera in the composition panel, I choose two views. Now we can look at the camera and other layers from, from two views. The name of each view is written in the corner and it shows that in the image on the right, we are looking at the layers from the top view. You can also see blue triangles in all four corners of this view, which shows that this view is currently active. By clicking on any view, that view becomes active and now you can see that blue triangles are created in the corners of the main view of the camera. I go back to the top view and zoom out to see the camera. So we can see that our 50mm camera is here, showing the whole picture. Also, our photo and text layers are located in this section. If I select the text layer, you can see the location of the layer better in the top view. I select the camera layer again and create a new camera again. This time I choose a single node camera with a focal length of 35mm. In this way, I can explain the difference between one node and two node cameras, as well as the difference between 50 and 35 mm cameras in the top view. I click on the OK button. Now you can see from the top view that the camera 35 is located here. So the angle of 50 mm camera is wider than 35 mm camera. As a result, the higher the numerical value of the presets, the greater the distance between the camera and other layers. Now, if I select camera 1, you can see that a point is created in the center of the image, which is called point of interest. If I move this point by holding the left click, it will cause the camera to rotate. Now it seems that there is a problem that we do not see the rotation of the camera in the opposite image. To solve this problem, I move the camera layer 1 to the top. Now we can see the rotation of the camera from the front view. So pay attention to the fact that the higher camera layer is always active. I press the Ctrl plus Z button to return the point of interest and camera layer 1 to the previous location. Now I select camera 2 which is the camera of a node. As you can see, this camera does not have a point of interest. If I open the camera layer 1, there is a point of interest option in the transform section. Two node cameras are suitable for complex camera movements such as angled motion pictures. But in camera 2, which is a node, this option does not exist and we have to use rotation options to rotate the camera. I close the layers and delete camera 2. To return to camera 1 settings and check other settings, I double click on this layer. The zoom option determines the zoom value of the camera and actually determines the distance between the lens and the image. If you adjust the zoom, the angle of view and the focal length of the camera will also change. The angle of view option determines the values of the focal length, the zoom angle, and the size of the video. By increasing the amount of angle of view, the amount of zoom also increases. Pay attention to this line. By placing the angle of view line on the layer, we can see the image completely. 
Here, we change the size of the video, as a result, the zoom and angle of view parameters also change. Depth of field is a light effect that blurs your foreground and background and is very useful in various After Effects projects. With focus distance, we determine the focus value of the camera. So I create some distance between the text and image layers to create focus. I exit the camera settings and click on the text layer and press the letter P to activate the position. By changing the Z-axis value, I move the text closer to the camera. Now I double-click on the camera layer. Pay attention to this line. This line shows the focus of the camera on the desired layer. As a result, by changing the focus value, I set the focus of the camera on the text layer, just like the focus of the camera in the real world. I increase the blur level to increase the amount of blur in the image. In this way, we can see that the photo behind the text is blurred because the focus of the camera is on the text layer. Now I put the focus on the photo layer, as a result, we can see that the text is blurred because now the focus of the camera is on the photo. I put the focus on the text again. Also, pressing the lock to zoom button adjusts the focus distance to the zoom value. Aperture adjusts your depth of field. The larger the aperture, the shallower the focus area. F-stop indicates the ratio of focal length to aperture. Most cameras specify the aperture size using the f-stop measurement. In After Effects, the camera position indicates the center of the lens, and the focal length indicates the distance between the image layer and the camera lens. By using the Units option, you can change the unit of measurement of camera settings to pixels or inches. Finally, I click on the OK option. By opening the camera layer and going to the transform section, we can adjust the position and rotation of the camera in the X, Y, and Z axes. In the camera settings section, there are the same settings that I explained a little bit ago, and from here you can also change the camera values. There are also shapes here that affect blurred images. It is better to check these options yourself to choose the best form. Now I close all the layers and click on the camera layer. In the composition panel I right click on the three line icon and select view options. In this window, by selecting when selected, you will see the camera guidelines only when you select the camera layer. This is very useful to avoid project clutter. You can also choose this option to hide the guidelines of light layers. In this way, I can see the guidelines by selecting the camera layer. Now let's create an animation by moving the camera. To do this, I first deactivate the Enable Depth of Field button because I don't need it. Then I press the P key to activate the position. I create keyframes in the first frame and the fifth frame. I place the time indicator in the sixth second and press the letter N to shorten the work area. I set the time marker to the first second and change the amount of motion in the Z-axis to move the camera forward. This way I move the camera behind the text layer. Now I click on the text layer and press the letter P so that the position parameters appear. I create a keyframe for the position in the first frame and another keyframe in the fifth second. Again, I set the time indicator to zero seconds and move the photo by changing the position value. In this way, I want the camera to display this part of the image first. I select all the keyframes and right-click on one of the keyframes and select Easy Ease to make the camera move smoothly. The last point is that you can use four views to adjust the camera. You can also use Custom View. Now I press the space button to play the video. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this tutorial till the end. Please like the video and leave a comment for me.
Subscribe to see more tutorials. See you next time.